AI equals a trillion watt hours. Paul, you always know how to bring the mystery <laughs> when I really have no idea what you're going to talk about. But what are you talking about here? Well, I, I was doing some research. I ran across a, a kind of a neat little paper. It was written by a, a PhD candidate at the uh, Amsterdam School of Business. And he, he wrote it about AI energy consumption trends. I mean, it's no secret to anybody that AI sucks up energy like uh, a sponge in water. Um, yeah, AI does and, suck. It does. Yeah. <laughs> he did have some really kind of interesting uh, facts in here, and I thought I'd talk about them today. Um, he said that uh, uh, the estimates for power needed for an AI query runs about from three to about nine watts, watt hours compared to 0.3 watt hour search for a uh, just a regular standard search. Uh, so that's, to me, that seems, seems like a lot of money to spend for a uh, provided search query. I don't know about you guys, but it does do an all better job. I mean, if you don't get things that are hallucinating, uh, you get more of a comprehensive report. But I've kind of gone back to uh, regular Google searches and, and uh, uh, information like that because it seems just a little bit more simpler and i believe it's a little bit more trustworthy too um yeah. what's out that uh, the uh, ai chip demand is surging but uh the uh, supply chain issues is going to kind of constrain the growth in that area and i think that's kind of just uh, obvious so um he had a statistic in there that uh, he said if, if google goes to full ai adoption on everything it would increase its electricity use by about 30 trillion watt hours a year, uh, which seems really expensive to me. I don't think they're going to go full AI on everything, but uh, um, that's that's a significant figure. And and uh, I mean, uh, you know, we're already an issue. We're we're kind of worried about how we're going to supply power for all the AI that we're going to be using. So it's a good fact to keep in mind. Um, he said that uh, in the study, he said that the uh, uh, long-term projections for like 2027 is going to be from 85 to like 150 trillion watt hours annually for AI servers. Uh, so that's definitely going to put a squeeze on our on our power. Hey, Paul, can I ask a clarifying question on this? Sure. Is this mach so you know? In my simple P little brain here, you can do AI three different ways. You can do it analytics based, you can do machine learning, deep learning, and then about 10 different ways of foundational models. You know, if you want to do text, it's LLMs. Is this an LLM uh, power? Yeah, he, he's looking at LLMs. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay. I think okay. that's where most of the power consumption is going to be. I mean, you know, it takes a little bit for machine learning, but uh, the LLMs and you know, rule of thumb, rule of thumb. What I've what I've seen and when I've talked to CSPs and people doing applications is, again, it all, it all depends. But there's a 10x training increase and a shockingly a 10x inference uh, in increase uh, as well. And part of that is because we're doing this on GPUs. Yeah. And and although GPUs will would be better at it in big batches than than CPUs, uh, and you do have some, you know, ASICs that are sitting on a GPU like the Tensor cores or are are ASICs. We still have all of these ASICs that can do this at about ten percent of mm -hmm. of the wattage. It's just harder to program. And, and that's why people are jumping on AMD as the number two here because it's GPU based uh, and and customers are preferring ultimate programmability to not miss the boat with uh, with GPUs versus going headstrong and and Intel Savannah 2 architecture is is more like uh, an ASIC uh, mm -hmm. uh, as well. But it definitely highlights the challenge that we have going forward. The topic we talked about with Maya is interesting because it, it is an ASIC and it adds programmability programmability at the um, uh, at the API uh, and at the um, I don't want to call it the firmware level, yeah. but uh, up there with things like uh, PyTorch and also the fra uh, framework level. Mm -hmm. 
you, it, it's it's interesting, you know, that you guys talk about this. If there there are statistics out there from the International Energy uh, Association, so data centers today consume, I think, it's one point three percent of the world's power. Right? That's the that's the equivalent of the country continent of Australia, yeah. and they're saying by twenty thirty it's going to be three percent. But they haven't yet accounted for the AI wave. Um, it's crazy uh, how much how much more power AI is going to add to that equation, and it's not just how do you supply the power. I'm a big I'm a big believer not sustainability but kind of cooling methodologies. It really it screams to you got to figure out a different way to to power and cool these these platforms that are doing your training and inferencing for you. You can't just go with a bunch of fans or. Um, you know, the traditional data center cooling methodologies, HVAC is not going to do it anymore, but yeah. Um, by the way, I said framework, I meant compiler, right. And that's how, uh, uh, Intel is doing it with, uh, Havana too. 